So the last step in this uh, series of videos that I've done as far as uh, paint correcting the car and applying ceramic coating, um, this is the ceramic coating part of the video. If you haven't seen the first part on how to paint correct it, I'll leave a link up there and a link down in the description and I'll go through the whole process on how to paint correct this on your own. Now if you have uh, paint corrected your car, you are ready to ceramic coat, you just can't immediately start ceramic coating it. I know you and may be tempted to do that, the paint's nice and you know fresh and clean, but there are steps you have to do before you get to the ceramic coating process. Laid out here are a few products that I'm using. The first step that you have to do before you actually lay down the ceramic coat is you have to prep the surface first. This paint is now contaminated with all the buffing compound for the polish and the cutting compound that's in the paint. You need a, a ceramic prep to spray on the surface and wipe it off to really pull that stuff off so you have a very clean panel to work off from for the ceramic coat to lay down on. This here is Q2M Prep. There's all kinds of different products out there that will do the exact same thing. I'm not endorsing this one over any other company. It's just what I happen to have and what I, what I had bought. This here is a ceramic coating kit. Very small bottle. You would think, how does this little bottle do a whole car? This will actually do more than one vehicle. And this is Avalon King. I've never used this one before. I used the Adams Graphene before, and I liked it. I just like trying different stuff, so I'm trying this one. I've seen it used before. It looked as though it was a real good product, so I want to try it for myself and see how I like it. Another thing you'll need is some good microfiber um, towels. These are from Adams. These here. You're going to want two towels for each step, meaning two towels for the process with the uh, prep spray and two towels when using the ceramic coat itself. And I'll explain that in a little bit too. Also to apply the ceramic coat, <clears throat> you're going to want some applicator pads. There's all kinds of sites that sell these too. It's just a small pad that you need to apply the ceramic coating with. And I'll show the process. I'll go through and do it on camera. Basically what you want to do, spray the panel with the, with the prep, wipe it with one towel, then wipe it with another towel. One towel is going to soak up the majority of the spray and the second one is there just to take up any residue that's still on the paint. And you want to do the same thing with the ceramic coat. And I'll explain the ceramic coat process um, when I start doing it. This part is real simple. Basically you're spraying it on the surface and you wipe it off and you wipe it off again with the other towel. Now before you start the ceramic coat, like I said before, you want to treat the surface with the prep spray. And I will use two microfibers for this just to make sure to really get all that up off the paint. Now a ceramic coating, just like a lot of these products, a little bit goes a long ways. And you also want two towels for this, one to wipe the initial ceramic coat off and the second one to really make sure you have all of it off. Now a ceramic coat, if you know how to wax, is virtually the same exact thing is waxing. Basically you want to dab the applicator pad like this. And just run it down like this. And basically what you're waiting for is for this to flash. And when it flashes, it will turn like a hazy rainbow color. And that's when it's dry. 
And at that point, that's when you can buff it with the first towel. And then use a second one to make sure you have all of the ceramic coat off. And the best thing with ceramic coat, you don't have to tape anything. You can get it on glass, trim. You can get it on everything and it doesn't matter. And you want to do the same pattern as with the paint correction. You go up and down like this. And then side to side to make sure you have even coverage over all the area that you're doing. Now the worst thing that can happen with ceramic coat is if you don't wipe it all up and you leave some of it to dry, it will be like a hazy, glossy area on the paint that doesn't look like the natural clear coat. And it will look funny and it will look weird. Eventually it will break down and go away, but that's like the worst that can happen. So that's why you want to be very, very thorough with wiping it with one cloth and then wiping it with another one to make sure you get all of that ceramic coat up. Now this has started to haze over, so I'm going to go through and wipe it with the first towel. And if you get any on the trim, like I got some on the fender here, make sure you wipe that up because you don't want that to completely dry before you go and actually do it because I'm going to do this whole trunk lid and the wing before I work my way down to the fender. And then take your second towel just to make sure you got all of it off. That's all there really is of ceramic coating. If you've ever waxed a vehicle, then you can ceramic coat. It's the same exact process. You wipe the product on and then you wipe it off. It just takes a while because it's such a small applicator pad and you just have to go over the whole car in small sections, just like with paint correcting. But the end result is worth it, especially when you've done it yourself and you saved yourself a whole lot of money. So I'm gonna go through and do the whole car. I'm not gonna record all of it, cause like I said, the video will be really, really long, but I'll put in bits and pieces of, you know, doing different parts of the car. You can ceramic coat taillights, you can do the glass, you can do everything with ceramic coat. It doesn't hurt anything. So that's what's really good about this kind of a product. So I'm gonna cut the video now and pick it back up as I go through different parts of the car. I'll put in some video and then I'll give some final thoughts at the end once it's all done. So I'm on the last panel now. I'll go through and show the whole car once it's completely done. I just have this last quarter panel to do. Now one thing I wanted to mention is that when I was doing the prep spray at the beginning, you don't want to go panel by panel and do the prep spray like here and then not do it here. Basically what I'm saying is prep spray the whole car because if you go panel to panel, you're gonna have that spray overlapping what you just did for ceramic coat on the panel before or after it. So the beginning, I was just doing that for demonstration purposes, but you would wanna do basically after that, I went through and did the entire car with the prep spray. And then I went back to start to ceramic coat the whole thing. As far as what I've used, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's a level line right there. I use about half the bottle to do this whole car. I haven't done any of the windows or anything like that. I did do the taillights, and I'm not going to do the headlights because I'm replacing those anyway. So I'm not going to do those. Now, generally, you could probably split this panel up, this rear quarter, but... I'm really tired and I've been paint correcting and ceramic coating this car my entire weekend off. So I'm just doing the entire panel at once. But one of the reasons why I said to go back and only do sections at a time 
is because if you take too long to go back and wipe this off, it will cure on you and you don't want that to happen. You want to wipe this off while it's still um, still wet basically before it starts to harden. So if you start to do the entire car and say you start wherever you start and you get back to where your starting point was, by the time you get back there, where you started is going to be dry and you won't be able to wipe it off very well. So pretty much just take your time and go through panel by panel and you'll eventually get it done. You know, all this together, what it took me to do this entire paint correction process and ceramic coat, I would put it at like probably around 10 hours for everything. It's taken me at least four hours with the ceramic coat and the paint correction was a good three hours doing that. And also there was a clay barring which probably took around an hour in the original uh, strip wash that I did when I started the entire process. I'm going to let that flash. For those of you that have seen the paint correction video, this may not look a whole lot different from that, but there's definitely more shine to it and it's definitely better protected now than what it was because you just can't paint correct a car and leave it. You have to put either a wax or a ceramic coat on top of it. But you now all this here is what I've already done on the car. And I'm not sure how much the camera, like I said, will really pick it up between the difference between before it was ceramic coated and the way it is now. But man, does this really shine. And I, I am going to get some video of the car outside of the garage. I'll plug, the, I'll plug that into this video before I post it. But I don't want to back the car out. My driveway is soaking wet. I spent a good 10 hours cleaning this car this weekend. I don't want to back out into the mud puddles and drive it back in even though i may not get anything on it i just i don't want to do it i do plan on driving the car later on this week before this video gets posted it'll be a few weeks before this is even out but when i do i'll get some outside pictures in the sunlight to see how good this really looks overall and like i said i didn't do the headlights there is some uh, moisture in one of these lights i don't see it now but it was in there so I'm going to replace those anyway, so I, I didn't bother to do it. When I get the new ones, I will uh, ceramic coat them before I throw them back in. And you can do the windshield, you can do the windows. Um, these haven't been cleaned yet. i got to go through and clean the windows and everything else and finish cleaning on the inside. But so far, it's coming along really well from where it was when I got it, which wasn't terrible condition. It just needed a little paint correction and to get it to where it is now. Another thing you want to remember too is why it's so important to make sure that your panel is wiped down with the prep and everything else is, once you put that ceramic coat on and it fully cures and dries, whatever is on the paint surface is going to get locked into it. There is no going back and picking out a hair or a scratch that you could have taken out but you didn't bother that's going to get locked in there underneath the ceramic coat because basically ceramic coat is like a secondary clear coat on top of your clear coat it dries hard and it protects the paint for a long time as far as how long it all depends really you know you'll see claims of two years ten years all that stuff what it really comes down to is how are you using the vehicle if you if i were to ceramic coat my bronco the same process i did with a cobra here it is not going to last as long because that's a daily driven vehicle it's driven all year round it's driven in rain sleet hail snow everything else where the cobra sits in inclement weather it's not driven in the snow i'm not going to drive it in the rain so any ceramic coat on this is going to last substantially longer because the more the vehicle is subjected to the elements, 
the more it's going to break down that barrier that is now on the paint. So it's really subjective. And there's things you can do to extend it. There's um, sprays you can put on that will help protect the ceramic coating and extend the life of it. So it's just all part of the overall process, really. Ceramic coat will last much longer than a wax. You know, wax breaks down really quick. It's just a paste, so it doesn't offer a ton of protection. But this is like the next level of paint protection for any vehicle. I already went through and wiped down the car again. I noticed a couple smear spots, so I went through and wiped those down. You know, this is a good time, you know, after you've gone through everything before, it really, really hardens, is to go through and wipe everything down again, just to make sure you didn't miss any spots. Because like I said at the beginning, I ceramic coated my GT350 when I had it, and this area up in here, and part along the hood, I mean, on the uh, roof, had um, high spots on it. And what will happen is that ceramic coat will dry, and it'll be like, like a just it's it's really hard to explain. You'll have to look it up or look into it. But you can tell it looks different from the rest of the paint. If you have a spot that wasn't wiped down correctly and it dries, it will leave a high spot. It'll kind of be like be just a different texture from the rest of the paint. This is definitely the worst part of the car, the hood and this fender. I can still see scratch marks in here. The polish that I use wasn't enough to pull these scratches out. And being on the front of the car, it does take the most amount of debris and contaminants being getting thrown at it all the time from driving. But the sides and everything came out really, really well. So you can see how faded this lower part of the bumper is. It's got a real faded, dull look to it. And I'll show you how little of this stuff you really have to use. Also, make sure you shake it up. This is a bottle that I had before. It's got a little shaker ball in there too for it. Luckily, I have a second bottle of this because I actually spilled this one when I was testing it out yesterday. But just put a very dab, like very little, on a microfiber. And just rub it into the plastic. It's hard to get that upper lip because it's got an indentation, but make sure you wear gloves with this too because this stuff will Stay in your hands, probably. Now, I did clean this bumper previously with some simple green, just to get any uh, crap off the off the uh, plastic before I applied this to it. So that's the whole bumper redone. It looks like it was either freshly painted or it's got a brand new bottom piece on, which of course it doesn't. And after I applied all of it, I went back through with a clean microfiber and just really rubbed it in well. 
And this stuff doesn't just make it wet so that it looks like it's bringing shine back. It's been sitting on there a while. It's not turning back to its usual faded look. So this stuff works really, really well. So that's it, the whole process is finally done. Like I said, I had about 10 hours into this with everything from the very beginning to the final step of um, ceramic coat in the car. Honestly, if you're asking yourself, can I really do this? If you've ever done mechanical work on a vehicle, you can do this. This is not as hard as doing mechanical stuff. And if in the end you decide this isn't for you and you don't want to do it, there's no shame in that either. Uh, what this really comes down to it's time versus money. You have to decide which one is more important to you. If you have the time and you want to learn how to do this and try it on your own, it's great. It saves you a bunch of money. But if you have a bunch of money to blow and you don't have the time and you want to take it somewhere, that's fine too. It all depends on which situation you're really in. And like I said, um, and at the end of this video, I'll show the outside pictures out in the sunlight when I take it out in a few days. So you guys can see this in the sunlight. Like I said from the very beginning, I'm not a professional. I learned how to do this on my own, watching videos, trial and error, doing things on my own. Like I said, I learned on boats with a rotary buffer, and I moved from doing that to ceramic coating, which I'd never done before, but I figured, hey, it doesn't look that hard, so I tried it, and it's really not that hard. Um, I'm not saying that detail shops, the people that are professionals, won't uh, don't do as good of a job they do a better job than i can do they have a lot more tools and equipment and better products and stuff like that but i wanted to show everyone the, the results you can get at home with very minimal spend at the beginning to acquire all this stuff to get results that are pretty close to what you get from a professional detailer but the reason why it costs so much for them to do a ceramic coating and paint correction and all that is because of the time invested. Like I said, I had 10 hours into this one car and you know that's valuable, especially when you have their expertise and everything else. But this was just to show you what you can do with just a, a small knowledge base of how to do this stuff to get results like I got on this Cobra. And you know, I highly recommend anyone who wants to do this stuff, you know, just try it. And every time I paint correct a car and ceramic coat it and put it on my Facebook, I always get comments of, will you do my car next? And my answer is always no, because it takes so long. But honestly, if you were to buy this stuff and you're on social media, you'll probably get the same thing from friends and family. Oh, will you do mine? And you can make the money back of what you spent on all that stuff. I've done family members' cars for paint correction and waxing. I haven't ceramic coated anyone else's cars but my own. Not because it's really hard, but because I just haven't. I didn't have ceramic coat when I did another family member's car, so I just did a really good um, wax on it. But in the end, you know, totally worth it. Just a lot of time invested, but I just wanted to show everyone the steps on how to do this, and hopefully some of you will take that initiative to go and try this on your own. If you do, please, please find me on social media, either Instagram or Facebook or anything like that, and send me pictures of the results after you did this, because I would really like to know if anyone who went out and saw this video and took it upon themselves to go through this whole process and the re results you got at the end and how happy you are at the end when you had the confidence to do it yourself because like I said at the very beginning, it's not hard. You just have to take that leap of faith forward and just go for it. I hope all of you found this video help, helpful in some way or another. Uh, I know both of these videos were really long. I try to do shorter videos, but this is something I couldn't really condense into a 10 to 12 minute video. Enjoy the shots at the end of the car out in the sunlight, but above all else, thanks for watching.